comes. I don't even, I don't even know where my points are. I just got to go with this. He comes to this pool where a lame man has been there 38 years. Look at where he goes to get a witness. He'll go to the temple. He'll go to the synagogue. He goes to a pool where everybody there is an invalid. Blind. Lame. Hope. Deaf and dumb. Jesus is going to a sick place. A place full of people with disease. To find himself. Somebody ought to get happy right here. Because you're not saved because your mama was a preacher. You ain't saved because your daddy was a deacon. Some of us, if it hadn't been for big mama 10 years before we were born, who didn't have a whole lot of theology, but had a whole lot of neology, and couldn't tell when it was going to happen. But Big Mama said, Lord, some way, somehow, that's my chillin' chillin'. That's my chillin' chillin' chillin'. And somewhere down the line, God remembered Big Mama's prayer because the fervent effectual Prayers of the righteous. Somebody ought to get happy. Because God picked you up when you were blind. He turned you around when you were lame. He called you out when you were nothing. And if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. I got anybody who can praise him now. Because he picked you. Sit. Sit in. He goes to a place where the disabled gather. He goes to a place full of disadvantaged, diseased folk. Isn't it wonderful that no matter where you were in your life, that God saw you and decided to bless you. He didn't bless you because you was all of that. Somebody who was doing some of the same stuff you were doing. Huh? They're not here today because they can't be here. They're laying in a hospital huh? or they're behind prison walls. Huh? But because God decided to, to come to a place uh, where nobody else would go, uh, I've got to get happy right here. Because uh, I'm one of them uh, that nobody thought uh, could be anything. Uh, but thanks be to God, uh, he specializes uh, in using rejects. Uh, he specializes uh, in using the downtrodden. Uh, he'll put his hand... Uh, on somebody's life that everybody else has slap your neighbor a five and say neighbor she's talking to me he goes to an undesirable place When he gets there, that everybody is diseased. Everybody got an issue. Everybody needs something. But when God decides, it's you he gonna use. When God 
decides. If you, he gonna bless. He will reach over everybody else on the road. He will call you out and leave everybody else in. In this, now, now, now the text says, he'd been there for 38 years. I choose to believe he wasn't the only one there. There were others that had been there a while, too. But for 38 years, this man laid in this place with nothing but diseased folk around him. Isn't it wonderful that God will bless you in the midst of whoever else wants a blessing? You ain't the only one in here that want a blessing. You ain't the only one on your road that needs a blessing. But God will single you out and bless your life. Somebody say, God bless my life. Whatever you do, God bless me. The Bible says, 38 years, he laid at the pool. This is the other point I like. It ain't one of my real ones. I'm going to get to them in a minute. But this is another point of scrutiny. The man didn't have to come to Jesus. Oh, y'all can't get that revelation. The man didn't have to come to Jesus. Jesus came where the man was. And when God decides to bless your life, he'll come where you are. In your one-bedroom apartment. In your downtrodden spirit. He will come right where you are. I used to hear. And some of you heard too. Preachers. Dog the man. Because he was there 38 years. You know how they preach. Some of y'all preached it. <laughs> Had he been there 38 years, he could have just rolled in. I mean, for 38 years, he could have inched his way. <laughs> day, day by day. <laughs> year by year and whenever the angel troubled the water he could have just fell in but these this going to start my real point there's something about God that you got to want what God wants you got to want what God is offering you look at your neighbor and say neighbor you can want it, but if it's not what God wants for you, you got to want what God is offering. Point number one, you got to want what God is offering. You may want a mate, but God may not be offering a mate. So you got to change your desire and want what God wants for you. You may want the promotion on your job, but God knows if he gives you that promotion, you're going to have to work on Sunday. Sundays. And you're the kind of Christian uh, that need to be the church on Sunday. Uh, so you got to want uh, what God is offering. Uh, and you got to be happy about it. Because uh, God is offering. Uh, listen to what God Jesus uh, says to the man. Uh, Will thou uh, be made whole? Uh, my, my, my. Uh, and the man starts going uh, and all this crazy rhetoric. Uh, well, you know, Lord. Uh, I really do want to be here, but you know, the angel troubles the water, and before I can get there, somebody else steps in before me. Jesus didn't ask him all that. He said, man, what do you want? And I came to tell somebody that this is the year that God is going to open up the windows of heaven and ask you, what? Somebody help me preach this thing. What? What do you want? Because I'm going to give you what you want. If you work with my plan, you got to want what I'm offering. Because I know what's best for you. I know what's in store for you. Because I'm going to bring you to an expected end. The, the lame man was by the pool. And God offered him a chance to be whole. 